It has been a long time since I have played a survival game that has kept me playing for hours. I often find myself needing to find something to keep me playing, or maybe I just take a break so it doesn't get stale. But I can say after 15 hours of gameplay, Survival Fountain of Youth is not getting stale. The game starts out by telling the story of your character and the failed adventure in search of the Fountain of Youth. A storm comes and wipes your ship out and the other two ships that were accompanying you on your voyage. The entire game is survival on an island, and your motivation is to find your crewmates and escape and complete the journey. And the thing I love is that this island is alive and thriving. Wild animals of various kinds, some dangerous to you, some not, they are all over the place. Boars, harpies, snakes, scorpions, wild dogs, they're just some of the creatures you're going to encounter on this island. And I'm just talking about the first island. You are not confined to just a single large island, though it is awesome. You'll eventually build a boat and travel to many different islands around the world. Each of these biomes or islands have their own unique dangers, different plants, different animals, different illnesses, and crafting ingredients. So many new things on each island, it's like a new experience every time. There is always something new to learn, something new to do, something to hunt or scavenge, something to build or expand on. Fountain of Youth always keeps you pushing towards progression, and you never really feel like you've made it. I'm going to break down the things that I love about this game, and then I'm going to go into some of the things that I'm not really fond of and that I personally think need to be fixed. Firstly, the environment. The islands are dynamic and living. There are thorns and bushes that can hurt you. The sun can burn you. The wind can chill you. The water can soak you. The environment is a real threat and not taking the proper precautions like gearing up and making the proper medications will make surviving very, very difficult for you. The map is very vertical with lots of dense jungles and low valleys, high hills, beaches and waterways, and lots of rocks or mountains to crawl up on. Part of how you explore the island, and I would say the primary way, is by getting up to a high area such as a cartographer tree or a mountain, taking out your map and sketching out the landscape and points of interest that you see from your vantage. You can even build your own cartographer stand if there isn't a point that is high enough of your liking. And whenever you do that, your map is then marked with what fruits and vegetables you see, what animals you see, points of interest, all that stuff is then shown on your map. But before you do that, nothing is on your map. And I love that about this game. You can use almost everything you find in this game. Sticks, stones, vines, bugs, animals, water, fruit, veggies, clay, stones, and more. There are so many recipes and so many craftable items that can make your life easier that I am amazed at how much thought and research went into the building of this game. Second thing, character progression. There are skills that you can put points into. You have concentration, resist diseases, resist poison, thirst control, hunger control, better sleep, learning, and alchemistry. These are still a work in progress with five levels planned on being implemented, but right now you can get up to level three in all of them right now, and the benefits of these skills are huge. I'm talking about time-saving skills, natural recovery abilities, and more. All of these skills are useful, and how easy your life can be is determined partly by the order you place your skill points. The first ones I personally selected helped with my day-to-day, -day, like improving my thirst and hunger meters. There are even books that you can find in your journeys from previous explorers that let you gain different enhancements. These will look to improve other skills like fire starting ability, cooking, skinning, throwing things, shooting, and stuff like that. There are lots of ways to improve your gameplay and improve your character's survivability. Thirdly, the storytelling. Now, I do usually find myself hating the stories of most survival games. They aren't usually that big of a factor for me and I just want to survive and skip it all. Green Hell and now Fountain of Youth are the exceptions. This game does a really good job at telling you who you are and why you are in this predicament and what you should be doing to get out. There are cutscenes that explain what happened in the past, diaries to read, scrapes of papers to find. The environmental storytelling is very, very impressive. For example, I came across one of my crew's crashed ships and when I got on and I saw one of the members, they had a bullet hole in their head, and I thought that was strange because they crashed. They would have died from the crash or natural causes of exposure or starvation, but no, a bullet hole in the skull, and that hints at maybe a mutiny. Then I found a note that told the story of what happened, and I wasn't far off. I didn't have to find that bullet hole. That's what I'm getting to. They didn't lead me to it. The developers have done a great job at using the environment to tell the story, and it makes you feel invested, and it makes you search every corner of the island to make sure you didn't miss anything. Fourth, the crafting. Now, like I said before, there is a lot to craft. You can go from basic wooden tools and weapons to iron. I am just getting to an area where I can mine copper, and I couldn't be more excited to get rid of my onyx tools because they, however, 
you know, useful they are, they kind of suck, all right? With each increase in quality of tool or weapon, you get increased durability and increased weapon damage. And there are various types of medicines you can make as well. Some will require fireplace to make, some require just a couple leaves, and then some, the more advanced ones, will require a chemistry workstation. And for every element in the game, there is a fix that you can make yourself. You can build a base of operations, tons of different machines and storage containers, your ship and a dock, carts for equipment and logs. You can even upgrade lots of these items. So whenever you just build one, that's not it. You can always add canisters or add efficiency or do something to make your time more well spent. For your armor, you start with nothing because you just barely survived a shipwreck. And then you work your way up from leaf armor to animal hide to leather to even more advanced materials later on. And it is very impressive how many materials there are to collect and if you are into inventory management and organization of base layout you are going to love this game fifth the combat it is simple and it is effective and it doesn't need to be more there are melee and ranged weapons i'm fond of using the bow personally but i also know there are guns and crossbow you can craft as well if you crouch you are less likely to be seen by an animal you are hunting and more likely to kill them without a fight at least at range something that i do enjoy now but thought it was weird when i started playing was the deflection ability. If an animal is charging you, if you hold up your blocking key, or the for me it's the right click on my mouse, right before the impact, it will simply push the animal aside. It works for birds, boars, and other small animals. I haven't tried it with the bulls yet on Copper Island, and I don't really plan to. Those things are terrifying, but they're more scared of me for some reason. This mechanic is a great way to stay engaged in combat when all you got is a bow, and it really gives you a chance to survive the onslaught of wild animals. Also, if you are running away from an animal, just get on a tall rock or something that they can't climb on, they will run away if they can't get to you. Just be ready to keep running when you get off because they are going to stalk you and wait for you somewhere else. Now, there are plenty of other things I find awesome about this game, but for the sake of time, I will keep it at those five. Now, I'm going to move on to the things that I don't really like that much, and I'm going to be honest with you, there's not really that much, but I think that these will be huge quality of life improvements. And the first one is that whenever you're going up hills, your character is like two feet tall. You can't see past the long grass for whatever reason, or even like the top of the hill, and it's like you sink into the ground, and it's pretty ridiculous because sometimes there's snakes or spiders or scorpions at the top of a said hill and you get bit and poisoned and you had no chance of even seeing the threat because you're like a midget. No offense to the, the, the dwarves or midgets out there, whatever you prefer to be called, all right? I'm just saying I'm as tall as you and it's not conducive to a survival environment where the grass is four feet tall all of a sudden. I'm sorry. The other thing that isn't the worst but could be improved is the general movement in the game. I feel so bouncy and almost like I'm running around on bouncy balls strapped to my feet or sliding on ice even. It's not an an attractive movement that makes the game unplayable, but it could really be better. Something that I would like to see added is a photo mode. The game is beautiful, the environments are scenic, and the heights that you can climb up to to see the landscape is massive, and I think they're doing themselves a disservice by not having a photo mode or even having the ability to hide the HUD elements. And the last thing that I don't like is the autosave. Now, it is good that there is an autosave, don't get me wrong. But what's not good is that it's the only save that is there to use. I mean, there are manual saves, right? But here's the thing. You go to the menu to manual save, but the only options is save and quit. And you get to choose your destination of quitting to desktop or the menu. Why can't I just save for the sake of saving? Why can't I save and then stay in the game? Why do I have to leave you, Fountain of Youth? Just add a <laughs> quick save button to F5. I don't think that's too much of an ask. There are some other great games out there, and one that comes to mind is Miss Survival. Now, fair warning, it's not nearly as polished as this game, but it is a good game and one I think that is having a big update soon. You can catch that video here, and if you made it this far, Consider subscribing, like the video to see more content like this, and let me know what videos you would like to see from me, and I will see you all in the next one. Happy surviving. Path out.